Hey guys, Tarek with Cyclone FPV, and uh, I am actually uh, kind of up early this morning getting ready to do a, uh, a uh, quick test build here. And I'm, I received from uh, Elliot over at Rush FPV. He was very kind enough to send me um, uh, one of their products here. I'm going to be testing out this new crossover uh, series receiver. So it's right here. And this is going to be the Fry Sky Edition. It's supposed to be like the, uh, I believe it's like the RXSR, I believe. Let me check real quick. Hold on. I want to make sure. I have that right so that is yeah this is supposed to be the equivalent of the this is a receiver that is compatible with the rxsr or with fry sky uh which is basically they're saying is similar to the rxsr so i figured i would go ahead and just kind of knock this out and uh so what i want to do is let me see if i can get this working there we go okay so right now i'm working on this really 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 tiny quad uh aaron one of our team pilots is talking to me about making these small ones now it looks like it's got a seriously oversized flight controller the funny thing about this is this flight controller weighs just as much as um, uh, the smaller ones with when you add the ESC and this one has the ESCs built on board. This is the HGLRC Zeus. So just for the sake of kind of getting this going, I wanted to try it. Um, and I obviously I need to add a receiver. Now I did not get the weight on this one, so I'm going to go grab the scale real quick and we're going to see what this weighs. Okay, so first thing we want to do is let's see where we're at, okay? <clears throat> All right, let me go ahead and get this, and then I'm going to go ahead and get the scale, I mean the uh, weight, and because that's how I can calibrate this. So let me grab the weight here real quick. Okay, so what I like to do is just to make sure my scale's on point, I'm going to go ahead and I usually will, uh, will uh, test the scale here. This is 50 grams, and so it's reading, ex oh, I guess it's upside down for you guys, I apologize. Let me see if I can kind of make this better there. Let's see if this will work better. Here, so that's 50 grams, right? So we know that this calibration looks good. I'm gonna take that off. And I think we're gonna go down, what is this one? Uh, 30 or 20, that's 20. Okay, so we're set, right? We know its weight is proper. So let's go ahead and see. And we are not weighing in at even a gram yet. So that's fine with me. That means it's gonna be good. Uh, and then we are at 29 here. Um, that's good, I think, I think we'll be able to do that. So if we do 29, if it's going to teeter between 29 and 30, this may be what puts it over the edge to 30. And there you go. So now we're at 30. All right. I can deal with that. Um, so we're going to have pretty little quick quad, pretty, pretty zippy quad here. But the main thing is to see where we're at with this. So um, we're going to look at how to connect it. It came with this information card here, which I'm going to need my old man goggles to read. So let me go ahead and switch back over now. <clears throat> and let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, all right. So what it's telling us first is that on this board right here and I'll see if I can zoom into this board for you so let me get right in there all right so the let me see if I can get a pointer here okay so looking at this board and looking at this card it says the following I'll keep this right here so what we can tell from here is that we've got okay we've got our antennas antenna 1 antenna 2 here's our bind button and then on our pins here we've got the F port output S port output, uh, S bus, sorry, output. We've got five volt and ground. Pretty simple. Um, and let's see, uh, let's see. They are going to, yeah, we will take that out and see how that works. I'm interested to see how this is going to go. Uh, and then let's see, in the beta flight settings, it tells you, and on your receiver settings, it tells you. Uh, actually, actually, it looks it looks really smart here. Um, I think it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, on the configuration settings, and I'll show you all this stuff here in just a second. I just want to look at this. Okay, so let's get it started, shall we? Um, main thing we want to do first is let's go ahead and prep this up. I'm really excited to see if this is going to work properly because I've been trying to come up with something different, and this might be just what we needed. As a matter of fact, here, I can give you guys even a better look at this if that helps. Why not, right? So let's go here. Uh, let's do this here and here. Bam, there we go. Let's go ahead and launch our camera. Now let's see if we can get something cool here. Okay, now you're looking at me and you're looking at me. That's terrible. Sorry for you guys. Let's do this. All right. So getting under the microscope here, and let me zoom out. And there we go. Excellent. Okay, so a closer look at this, obviously, is our bind button right here. Uh, they consider this antenna one. This is antenna two. You have F port, S bus, and then the way they have this is five volt and ground. So that's how we're gonna go ahead and wire it up. And I'm gonna actually probably keep this under the microscope and just prep it up for you guys. That way you can see how I do it here. I don't know, if it moves too much, it may be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but let's see what we got, okay? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our flux pen. We're gonna go ahead and just put some flux on the board. 
Okay, just leave that like that for a second. I've got the I've got the soldering iron on already, so we're gonna just let that kind of dry a little bit, and we're gonna clean the tip of the soldering iron. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pre tin all the pins. So bear with me a sec. This is kind of awkward to have to. Oh, actually, I don't have to. I can bring this to me because you guys are looking for my. All right, here we go. Let me see what I can do here. I will try not to move this board too much, although under the microscope it's going to look like it's moved 100 feet. Right now, all I want to do is pre tin it, right? Let me just see if I can get some pre tinning going on. And I'm not using a super fine soldering iron. I don't like to use the super fine ones if I don't have to. I don't think in this case I'm going to have to. But we shall see. Here we go. Oh, sorry, I lifted that up. I shouldn't have because I realize you guys can't see it. All right. Good, so everything looks good. We've got these ready to go. Uh, okay, so with that said, pre-tinning pre is done. Um, they do not, I do not believe they give you any wires for this. It does not come with any wires, so I'm gonna have to now just find some wires to use with this, and I'll probably grab, grab some old uh, fry scout wires or something. Uh, and let me see what else they're telling me here. Uh, they are saying that port settings, okay. They said to use the F port. Hmm. Use uh, beta flight settings. Use uh, this or F port. So let me see. USB VCP. Okay, they're saying to turn on serial RX, which we know. Telemetry output, F port, receiver mode. Okay, so let's just see how this is going to work, okay? Because I was not planning on using the F port, um, but, you know, we'll give it a shot uh, with just the S port and see what happens, okay? Um, now, let me see something else here. It will be interesting to see um, if I can get this uh, to use RSSI. So I think I will. Yeah, you know what, I think I will. I'll just use the S bus for now and then we'll do an, S, uh, an F port test later. Sorry, I'm kind of trying to decide how I wanna do this. Okay, so let's get out of this now and go back to our table here so let me let me do this bam let's get rid of this okay and close that down and now we've got our Zeus right here and so the Zeus has already been wired and I was really debating where I was going to put this I've got room to fit it underneath right here but I think what I'm going to do is I may just try to place it somewhere between the camera stand oh god now I gotta get this out hold on this could be the deal breaker right here there we go okay so let's see what we want to do. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, going, to, going to do this here. Let's give you guys some light. There's my ugly mug, and there we go. All right, um, so let's go ahead and get the Zeus started. Let's pretend this. And so on our Zeus, we know that our S bus and everything is going to be right here. So let's do the following. We have our ground, which is right here, okay, our, our fiber bolt, and then our S bus, which is right there. Okay, and we're just going to start with that for now, all right? And now we've got to get our wiring together. So let's do our wiring here. Let me find some extra wire that I know I have. I'll just grab something like one of these and just take some wire off. And I'm not going to need much, clearly, but I'll just take the corresponding color, so red black and yellow. That's what I'm going to use. So let me go ahead and cut those. Actually, I don't know how much I'm going to need, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that much. Okay. I need to turn this open this light real quick. Get some more light in here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to strip these wires down. Uh, it sounds a little more more graphic than it needs to be. We're just gonna, gonna go ahead and strip the wires and get them tinned up. Okay. 
Okay. And instead of dipping them in the uh, solder or in the flux paste, I'm just going to go ahead and go over them with the pen real quick. It's a little bit easier when you're dealing with small wires. So let me do that real quickly. Oh, phone calls are coming in early today. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and tin them up. Usually I'll put these in clips or something, but I'm kind of just excited to get this done and I'm not gonna really spend a bunch of time trying to tin everything up. I just wanna get it going, there we go. All right, everything looks good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and Get that. Um, I think what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go ahead and mount to the receiver because I want this part to go smoothly and I need to know how much, how, how long I need to make these wires from here. So if you look at this card, again, on the card that they give you, uh, it says that we're going to go S bus, ground, and 5 volt. So the third wire, or the, well, yeah, let me just show you. So from the, from closest to me, this is going to be uh, S, port, uh, S bus right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. That wire is a little too long. Go ahead and cut this down. There you go. That's a good length. About a millimeter and a half. I think it's probably good. Now hopefully this receiver is going to sit still. I don't want to have to mount it up on the... Uh... Oh, okay. Before I go screw this up, let's go ahead and tape this down then. I happen to have some electric tape sitting right here, so I guess I'll use that for the time being. Right there. Yeah. Okay, so let's do our S bus. There we go. Let's do our 5 volt. It's a little long as well. Let me go ahead and cut that down. And then we'll do our ground. Pretty simple. I mean, for the size of the board, it's pretty tiny. They definitely give you a good space to work with on those pads. So I have no complaints there at all. There we go. All right, so everything's on pretty good. Go ahead and remove our electric tape. Okay, and so now our receiver looks good. We've got our three wires in nicely. Uh, I'll go ahead and <clears throat> the one thing I want to do now is I want to see where I'm going to place this. So my guess is I'll put it in line with the board like right here because I believe our camera stand is going to be, oh, let's see if that's going to be motor four. Then this, well, it doesn't matter. Let me just see how we're going to do. So I think that with our, yeah, we're going to have plenty of room. So even with our camera stand on, this is going to have plenty of room. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it there. So the next thing I'm going to want to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and heat shrink this in because I do not want it to be touching any of the components. So let me grab some heat shrink real quick. And I believe this will fit. I'm gonna check first, make sure. Oh my God, I should have cut it. My bad. All right, so we're gonna go, I try to go about three millimeters longer on each side just because I want it to cover the span of where I'm gonna put the hot glue to. So let's see if that works. Let me wind this back up. The delays of trying to keep the bench clean while I'm working is a pain in the butt sometimes. By the way, that's my son texting me, so if you'll excuse me one second, I just wanna get my phone and see. I know they're getting ready for school and I wanna wish them the best day, so bear with me a second. Uh, let's see, is that him? Yes, it is. Hey, dude. Love you too, I miss you. Oops. Oops. Okay. We'll see you at practice today. Yeah, my boys are both, they're all uh, doing sports now and I'm really, uh, really excited for them. Today, uh, my son, my, 
My middle son, Landon, is doing cross country and football. My oldest, or cross country, yeah, and football. My oldest son is doing football, and my youngest son is doing football. So, unfortunately, uh, oh, never mind. Anyway, so that's good. So I'm excited for them, and I'm wishing them the best with that. <coughs> I try to make to every practice. I want to watch them do all their stuff. Uh, these cross country guys, they're a breed on their own. I don't understand that at all. These guys, it's 100 something degrees out here. It's hotter than Beirut, and they're just running around like they enjoy it. I'm like, whoa, that's tough. All right, so let me see. I'm just going to go ahead and get as much glue in here as I can. Because what will happen, and I've, I've said this before in my videos, when I heat this up, it's actually going to melt the glue even more and kind of seal the, um, the receiver in place and kind of seal the antenna so they don't just break off in the first problem. So let me go ahead and... What it'll do is it'll squeeze the glue and kind of close it off. And there has some excess glue come out, but that's no big deal. I mean, just, you know, this glue is really good because once it's cool, you can just peel it. All right, so there we go. And now what I'll do is I'll go in there and I will squeeze those edges. Let me see. So I will squeeze the edges now and the glue will just come out. And what it's going to end up doing, it's hot though. Holy crap, that's hot. But what it'll do, and when you get it on, you just kind of, you know, you know, rub it off there. Like, it'll just um, kind of make a little dirt there, a little mess, and then you just, that's it. Just get rid of the excess strings of glue there, and those will disappear. And then what you've got is you've got a pretty nicely sealed receiver, okay? And then you can clean it up. Once the glue is fully dried and cooled, you can clean it up. There you go, and then these pieces just come off. But the good news is, what you have done is you've, you've better secured your antennas from just ripping off during flight, uh, during a bad uh, rack or something, and you've got everything pretty sealed. Uh, I definitely like this approach much better, and all you do is just clean the mess there, and then you're good to go, okay? Um, now, the way I'm looking at this going is, who? let's see, I think what I'll do is I'll put it like this, okay, which makes it pretty close, and then what that will do is... I may even angle it here. I'm just trying to figure out with the wiring, even if I angle it. Because what I'd like to do, I could sit it like this. What my goal would be is to try to get these antenna, try to get the antenna out somehow. But, uh, and I don't think that's gonna be an issue. We can go underneath or what have you. All right, so we'll just keep it straight like this, all right? And uh, to do that, I'm just going to put a very, very, very small uh, drop right I'm gonna put this on here and I'm just gonna let it sit. Okay, just like that. Now, that's gonna cool. So then all we have left really is to do these wires right here, right? So here's our, here's where we're at so far. And let me now zoom out a little bit. All right, so let's see. And I gotta get me some my drink. Thanks for my wife. Thanks to my wife for making this awesome smoothie today. It was very tasty, thank you. All right. So obviously the wires are extremely long. Um, I hesitate to cut them only because it's still new. This board's new to me. I wanna make sure the position of this board is good. So I may, just for the sake of not having to take this heat shrink off down the road, I may just kind of try to fold this around just so I can, let me twist these up real quick. So I'm going to twist these up, okay, just like that, and try to lay this in such a way to where I can still, yeah, I think I can do that, just like that, maybe keep it clean. All right, so I think I can get away with maybe cutting this much out, so let me go ahead and cut that. Let me remove this much wire. I don't need that right now. And, you know, obviously, once I test this, if this turns out to be the right way to configure this, then I would obviously shorten the wires fully, but I just don't want to make that mistake and then have to open the heat shrink back up. I tell you what, growing this little beard is a pain in the butt because everything you drink and eat gets stuck in there like leftovers. All right, let me tend this up real quick. Okay, there we go. Not sure where that came from, but I got a rogue rubber band just flying around here. 
All right. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And we can just thin that one out. All right. Let's go ahead and get these put down now. So we're going to do ground. Right here. There's our ground. Let's get our five volt. Here. That's my son. Let's do an S bus right there. Okay, so we got all three. Now we want to just kind of set these down. So I'm going to just kind of go down that path that I had right there. I'm going to take it down the side like this. And then I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of pull the wire, straighten it out without it getting too unraveled. And let's just leave it like that. Okay, now to hold it in place, I may drop some glue right there just to kind of keep it organized. But for the most part, I think that that's going to look pretty good, at least for testing purposes. This should be really good. Uh, and so let me just kind of tack that down there a little bit. And I may just give, me, give myself just a small drop, like right there. Okay, we'll let that go, and that should hold in place pretty nicely. All right, and then that'll give us enough room to put our stand here, just like that. Make sure this is on all the way. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So that should be all right. Then this will go like this. And then our camera, perfect. And there's ample room, and we can still get to the bind button, which is right here, so that'll be easy. Everything fits nicely, should be no problems. And then we can just clean all this glue up, and everything else without any issues. Okay, so let me just kind of get rid of that. Excellent. Okay, so now that we've got this done, I need to get, um, I need to get uh, the rest of these wired. So let me grab this phone real quick, see what's going on with my boys. Okay, good. All right, so we've got to get our JST now on for our um, positive and ground, for our LiPo basically. So I'm gonna do that. I am gonna use the JST cable for now. I don't think I'm gonna use the XT30, um, but uh, then I've got to get my BTX done, or actually it's going to go. We'll get that done over here. Uh, all right, and we are actually using the Rush um, setup for that too, so you'll be able to see that get done. All right, so first thing though is going to be to see how this goes. So I'm going to grab my transmitter. All right, let's just kind of get this part, because this video is really about... Welcome to work with TX. I'm going to use my QX7, and this video, since this video is about the Rush... Uh, about the receiver that is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just test that first and we can do the rest of this build in different segments, okay? So, now, I need to get, uh, I can use the alligator clips for the board, so that won't be an issue. Uh, I am gonna have to, based on how I've done this motor, and this is the one thing that I don't have a small angle USB port, um, I'm going to have to remove, I don't have a right angle uh, USB port right now. That sucks, but I thought I did. Maybe I do. Hold on. Maybe, maybe there's a chance. Let me see. Oh, actually, I might. Hold on. This might work. Let me see. If this works, we might be in good shape. Okay. And it looks like it might actually work. Let's see. So we would want this to go right here. If I can fit this in. There. Oh my gosh, perfect. Perfect, perfect. That's going to work out great. So I'm going to go ahead. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start setting this up the way that they said to. So you will see. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here on the computer. And we'll do the screen and the quad. There we go. Okay, and let's get Betaflight open. All right. 
Okay, so the. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of uh, one of my quads here. So we're going to make a copy. I don't know if you can see this, but I guess for right now, why don't we do this? Why don't we take this screen and put beta flight down here? Or maybe we'll go split screen. So let's do that. So let's do one, two. Let's try that. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just copy one of my models over. So let's do this one. Yes, yes, okay. And let's do copy. And we're going to move it to five. We're going to select five. I'm going to rename this. So let me rename it to, um, I don't know, we'll just call this uh, Rush. U-S-H, I don't know, let me see, where is this stupid hyphen, oh, it must be here somewhere, Rush, and then we'll do test, T-E, sorry guys, I know this is a crappy part of it, but I didn't plan this part. Okay, so we're going to do this as a rush test. Oh my god, if I get the stupid letter. Okay, there we go. And let's go back. And it says we are going to use it as a channel 1 through 16. And this is, what is this on my model? This is model 5. So we're going to change this to receiver number 5. We're going to bind it. Now, it does say here that if you want to bind it, uh, it says binding uh, operation is as follows, which is going to be... Power the receiver, push the bind button for two seconds. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is different than the regular uh, uh, Fire Sky receivers because here it's saying you need to power it up first. So let me go ahead and make sure my uh, stuff is set here. And we are going to be running this on a 2S battery, so I'm going to kind of mimic that here. All right, and then let me see. Okay, so we're going to put our ground. I haven't obviously soldered anything on here yet for power and ground. So we're going to just do this, and we're going to do this, just like that. And that should. You can see, there you go. Okay, let's see what we have. Make sure this is on properly. I don't want to short anything out. Okay, so it says, first thing we're going to do is power it up. Okay, and then it says... Press the bind button for two seconds. Now let me just make sure I get this right. It says to bind it, push bind button for two seconds, then let it go. So I'll push it for two seconds. Uh, where am I at here? One, two, there you go. And then it says bind. And there it goes, it said it'll go solid. So when you're done, you're done. So we're done. I'm going to exit out. And that says that we're bound at that point. And we are. Look at that. We have our full RSSI. <clears throat> I, I got to tell you, I mean, right off the bat, I'm extremely impressed with this. This is amazing. Uh, worked out real well. Let's go ahead and connect to Betaflight now. Let's go ahead and make the settings like it said. So what it tells you to do, now we know that we're running, it's, it tells you right here, and it's got pictures of it for you. Um, and I'm going to see if I can zoom into that. So let me just, let me see if I can zoom in here. So on the card, I don't know if you can read that, but hopefully if you can, uh, it tells you right here. So that's kind of blurry, I guess. But uh, it's saying to, um, oh, I gotta read this. So it says to, okay, this part we know to set the UART that you're gonna be using to um, Serial TX, right? And then, uh, let's see what else it says. I'm gonna zoom out because I can't read this and have you guys read at the same time, but I am extremely happy with that. Okay, so let me just look at this real quick. It says, um, yeah, yeah, if, if you're using F port, if not, you're using S port, that's fine. And then set up telemetry. Okay, okay, so let's see what we got here. Now, I don't think that's gonna work on this side of it, but that's because um, I don't think we're gonna be able to get that. The S bus is only gonna be one direction, uh, whereas F port would be bi directional. And we do have RSSI here coming in, so let me see how we're gonna have this handled here. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let me save this. And then let's go to um, 
architect here. And then let's go to our configuration. And I'll adjust all that later. But right now, we need to go and we need to select our serial based. And then we're going to go to SBUS. And then we will leave that. Okay, and everything here looks good. Um, we do have, like I said, we do have our RSSI on the signal here. And then what I'm going to check with here is I'm going to see on receiver tab. Sorry, let me go to receiver tab now and see what the computer's looking like here. Okay, so I'm going to run the RSSI like this. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and quickly type set. All right, so I'm going to go to the CLI because I'm not running F port. So set RSSI underscore channel equals 16. Save. And that is basically channel 12, which we know is receiving it right now. So when I click connect, I now have my 100% RSSI right here. And if I go to my um, receiver tab, you will see that here's your RSSI right here. All right. And if you want to test and see if it's working, go back to your setup, right? Because I mean, 100%, it could be, it could be bull for all you know. So just go ahead and power your receiver off. Okay, and I'm going to turn it off. And then what we should see on our receiver tab is, yeah, okay, so it's off now and it's, it's stuck here. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. But what we know is if we, let me go ahead and power this down. Okay, power's off. And we'll go ahead and disconnect from the computer. So let me click this, well, actually, I'll just click disconnect. Go ahead and power this connect again. Power it up. And let me see where we're at now. Okay, I need it to bind real quick. It hasn't, oh, wait, whoops, my bad. Welcome to Orca TX. Switch warning. Acro mode on. Okay, so now I can go and see that my RSSI is fluctuating here. Um, I don't, I'll tell you this, and let me just try to, make a move here because one of the thing okay so you can see now as i move the controller away we're going to see rssi signal change the one thing that is a concern which i believe uh, is my setting here and i just need to set it in here and i'll go over that later with you so we do know the rssi is working because right now i'm going to move the controller away we're dropping here uh, and that's looking pretty good um good so our rssi is configured i mean i'll be honest with you guys that was probably the easiest um it's probably the easiest setup yet. I mean, that was pretty instant. Uh, no issues. Um, I don't know what they're doing on firmware settings or anything like that. If we're gonna have to do firmware updates later on or what firmware they recommend, I will discuss that with them. Uh, but for right now, I am extremely excited that this um, this worked out well. Let me go to my receiver here real quick and change this. Uh, click save. Uh, okay, so now this is gonna be different. Let me go here, save, okay. And then we can change this. Let's change these, click save. All right, and we've got all of our, all of our auxiliaries are set. So we've got one, uh, let's see, what do I have? Two, there we go, all right, good. good. So that's looking good. Uh, we've also got our throttle settling here. So now if I go to modes, and I'm gonna add my range, there we go. So that's our arming, and then for horizon, Move that on. over here, fail safe, put that here, and then buzzer, leave that here, and then let's see what else, air mode, mode. leave on. that there, mode. On. and I think mode. that's going to be it, so that should take care of it, um, go back to configuration, and we'll just set the board. Now, the rest of this is going to be board based, so I'm not going to really worry about it right now. I do not want anti gravity on, and I'm not going to use dynamic filter for right now. Um, everything else looks good. I don't think there's any other issues there that I need to worry about right now, so I'm going to go ahead and click save it. And that's it. This thing would be ready to arm. Uh, theoretically, um, if I was to go to my motors, I believe. Yep, there they go. So our motors are running. I haven't done any BL Heli updates or anything yet, but. We got full function here, and this thing's working great. So, so far, guys, I'm really excited about this. I think this is gonna be a great uh, receiver. Maybe something we start bringing on here. I'm gonna go ahead and 
I think based on this test alone, I'm going to go ahead and place my first order with them for the, uh, a good amount in stock. Uh, they do make these for Spectrum and um, uh, for FlySky as well, I believe, uh, and Turnigy uh, compatibility. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, don't forget, please, please, uh, what is that? Subscribe to us on YouTube and um, follow us on Facebook. And if you have any questions, hit me up at targetcyclonefpv.com. I'm getting used to all these little buttons here. All right, so that's our test for this, man. I'm really excited about it. The next one I'll do will be with the F port and using bi-directional communication. So we have telemetry coming in and out. Um, and uh, that's it. All right, if you have any questions, if not, uh, safe flight, guys. God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye.